Uh, you can now add planet Earth's most plentiful natural resource to the list of things that investors can trade. Water began trading on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange today, joining other commodities such as oil, soybeans and Bitcoin. Let's bring in Tim McCourt of the CME to tell us more. Tim is the global head of equity index and alternative investment products at the CME, which is the world's biggest futures exchange. Tim, it's great to speak with you. The backdrop here, of course, is climate change and droughts have made water a growing risk for populations, water scarcity specifically, a growing risk for populations around the world. And certainly this is a big issue for farmers and other big users of water. What kind of demand have you seen for what you guys are now allowing to trade, water futures? Yeah, that's a great question. And as you said, when we look at water in general, it is one of the most vital and also most scarce resources uh, that we have on the planet. And even today, about 2 billion people are living in countries that face water scarcity issues. And by some forecasts, by 2025, almost two thirds of the world population could be facing water shortages. So when we look at such a scarce and vital resource, one of the things that the, at the CME group that we've been focusing on with our partners at NASDAQ is how to bring products to market that allow people to hedge or manage their risk associated with something that's so vital and so critical to what we do. So when you look at the users of who might be trading water futures or who might have that risk in terms of price uh, to water, it's certainly a lot of agricultural business, but you also look at things like municipalities who have to deliver water to their constituents, public utilities, energy companies, or a lot of consumer companies that have water as a raw material. Uh, or an input into their production process. So a lot of people have uh, natural exposure to, to water, but up until today, couldn't manage that risk in a, on a regulated exchange. And that's what we're so excited about with this contract is being able to bring that risk management to such a critical resource. They have been able to track the cost of water. If you look at a five-year chart of the NQH2 O index, which basically tracks a certain contract, a, a certain kind of water price um, that you can find on Bloomberg Terminal and other places, what you'll see is that we've seen a big surge in the price earlier this year. Um, you're focusing specifically on water supplies in California. Why are you starting there? So that's, a, that's another great question. So when you look at the NQH2O index, which is the NASDAQ Vela's California Water Index, that indexes water entitlement transactions in the state of California, effectively assigning a price to water uh, right at the source. Uh, one of the things that we're excited about with this index is that it allows for the transparent pricing of the resource, uh, where it doesn't get involved in some, to some of the associated downstream costs around storage, conveyance, transportation, uh, loss, or spillage. It's really just in terms of the, the price at the access point, or where it's effectively entitlement rights around the land lease transactions. So does that now, mean that the you'll futures have on top of that? Does that mean you'll have futures, futures uh, on top of that now? We'll, oh, sorry, this is a little delay. Apologies. No, no, no. Let me just follow up. Does that mean that you'll have water futures based on water prices in New York, for instance? Because water obviously costs different. Uh, there's a big gap in the price between water in New York and water in California. No, absolutely. So when we look at this futures contract on the California index, uh, it's first, I should say, it's financially settled. So you don't need to be in the California market to trade the futures contract. It can be used as a proxy for anybody with a risk to the price of water. But gotcha. our focus is on growing this product and this market because California is the most dynamic and most active water market in the U.S. And working with NASDAQ, certainly there could be eventual, uh, additional and eventual product development in other regions, but really focused on making making sure that California and the futures contract on the California water market is successful before we expand it to, to other geographies. Okay, understood, understood. And sorry for the interruption earlier. Tim, how exactly do you trade water? Can you get physical delivery of it? And I ask this because for oil, you can get physical delivery. And that's one reason why oil prices, or at least oil futures, fell below zero in late April. We saw it go to negative $37 a barrel because there was so much oil sloshing around that companies didn't have anywhere else to store it. Could that be something that happens with water? So when we look at the design of this contract, it's financially settled. So it's much more akin to say the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100 futures contract, where you're just moving in US dollar terms, the price performance of the index. There is no physical delivery. There's no conveyance of water. Uh, no one is waiting for water to be delivered uh, to them in, in terms of some other physically delivering contracts. 
And that's actually been really helpful because the topic of water or risk management of water has been around for, for several years. Uh, but we've always run into challenges around how do you handle that delivery aspect? How do you handle the conveyance, the storage, the, the grading of, of water, so to speak, at delivery? And it's not the same infrastructure that some of the other physical commodities have to support the delivery. So working with NASDAQ to deliver and design the index, then futures could be uh, overlaid on top of and only using the price performance of the index itself. You don't have necessarily that, that logistical or that supply and demand feature of what happens at delivery. It is just what is the value of water as it comes out of the ground effectively at the source uh, in the adjudicated basins that make up the index. All right, Tim McCourt, thank you so much for giving us uh, some of the background here for the water futures at the CME. Really appreciate it. And Renita, in September, I spoke with a regulator who was actively studying the idea that extreme weather events can cause financial instability. And he said that perhaps down the road, you have water futures now, maybe you'll have uh, wind contract futures or mm -hmm. solar contracts mm -hmm. uh, or air quality contracts. These are all things that you can think about because they do pose a risk to financial stability. Right, there, it's like. We break news on YouTube for YouTubers.